Robotic arms are very precise in their motion and that's why they are utilized in welding, car manufacturing industry, pick and place objects of very accurate requirements. Interestingly, a lot of maths is going on behind robotic arms motion and in this video we will look into major aspects of computation required for motion that is based on relations. To get started, the very first thing you need is a robotic arm in a simulation or a real world. For this video, I have Franka Mika Panda robotic arm which is 7 degrees of freedom robotic arm in ROS1 with a joint trajectory controller already set up. To this robotic arm, I can send joint angles and those should be in radians and they will move smoothly using the joint trajectory controller. Joint angles comes from the term of mathematics and when we talk about mathematics and robotic arms, we start with matrix multiplication for its structural understanding. And specifically, we utilize linear algebra, matrix multiplication inside of it. Mainly, we use DH table to represent connection of robotic arms base to its end vector or tool. With the help of DH table, from origin to the end vector, all joints are represented by a matrix depending upon the degrees of freedom of a robotic arm. And that matrix contains rotation and translation properties. Forward or inverse kinematics are just bunch of matrix multiplications, the concept from linear algebra to which we get a relation from base to the end effector or tool of the robotic arm. In forward kinematics, we determine the position of robotic arms and effector based on the joint angles. And in this specific example, we are using robotics toolbox to provide us kinematic solutions for our robotic arm. Now this library robotic toolbox for Python requires two main things, robotic model and the angles you want to give to your joints. Then we provide it to the forward kinematics function, which gives us the output where our robots and effector will be in three dimension. You can see X, Y, Z value has been given based on the angles input we provide. We can see here in simulation as we input specific angles, which makes the robotic arm move towards desired positions, which is also telling us that our end effector is in this specific location in X, Y, Z. Apparently both of the forward and inverse kinematics seems to be the same, but there is a big difference. When you are working with robotic arm, it will become more clearer. Let's start with forward kinematics. We say that rotate joint 1, joint 2, joint 3, 20 degree, 30 degree, 40 degree respectively. And then we tell by calculations that our end effector or the pin of our robotic arm, the end point or tool is in three dimensional XYZ at this specific point. By rotating the joints, we tell and compute the end effector location. But in inverse kinematics, we want end effector to be at this specific point in 3D space XYZ, but you are going to compute or inverse kinematic algorithm is going to compute all joint angles by itself. So inverse kinematics is inherently more computationally expensive, more practical because we want this sort of automation. Now let's reverse it. In inverse kinematics, we determine the joint angles required by the robotic arm by giving an input of three dimensional point for the end effector. It is more useful and computationally expensive. Similar to F kind function for inverse kinematics, we have I kind to which we provide robot model as an input and the 3D point to calculate the inverse kinematics and provide us for joint angles for the robotic arm. And then afterwards, we send those joint angles to the joint trajectory controller. Here, let's take a look here. We input four different target positions and for each of these four, we get necessary joint angles individually. Then we supply that to the joint trajectory controller and robot produces smooth motion for all of these desired points. 